Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com backslash 49 County News TV. all the schools that's coming up and kind of explain how we'll handle that at our next meeting. Okay. Um, actually, Tammy is the one that helped help me break this down because, you know, we've agreed to give the schools 135000 a year for two years. Come in. Um, how are you? Good to see you. Hey, guys. Good to see you. Come on down and have a seat, please. Thank you. Hey there. Go ahead. And um, we have that scheduled to do it like the first day of September, which of course we won't be here then, so we're going to do it on Tuesday night, the 4th. And um, Tammy had talked to the different schools and kind of broken it down. We had agreed to, to fix it, correct me if I'm wrong, Tammy, that each teacher could get like $200 kind of set up in their own account. And um, she had broken it down where there were like 47 teachers at the elementary school, uh, 31 at the high school, and 27 at the middle school. So that was going to leave us writing like a check for $9,400 to the elementary school, $6,200 to the high school, and $5,400 to the middle school which that total would be $21,000 that we would take off of the $135,000 gift to give them. That money will be set aside so that each teacher will have the $200 to, to use for their school supplies. So we were gonna do like three separate checks, you know, for those, those amounts, one for 94, one for 6,200, one for 5,400 to the respective schools and that would leave a balance of $114,000 after we take that 21 out of the 135. And we will split that three ways equally between the three schools, which would, would be each school getting $38,000 a piece. So basically we'll be writing each school two checks. Each school two checks. Yes. Okay, and, and you're gonna notify the parties to be here to accept their yes. checks? Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Thank you, Tammy, for sending so that for me. <laughs> they just, I just asked him. The, the principal sent the information. So. That's good. So, Southern Magazine is coming to Hamilton Friday to do a little article. Uh, they'll be here at 9 o'clock. They'll be doing some video and, and some write up. And, Basically, they're going to feature uh, mounds that we have here in Hamilton. I went to Birmingham and had the mounds added to the Alabama tour, a uh, tourist attraction for the state. And um, the organization is going to do some signage for us and uh, and put down at the mounds, and we'll be having um, some input from, uh, possibly input from Mr. John Berryhill, who served as the Indian chief for a period of time for the tribe that still meets here occasionally, and he may have a few comments in the article. Uh, but they'll be here Friday morning to do that, and uh, it'll be a little publicity for our area, and that won't be it an expense item for the city that's going to be something that will be done for us. Alan Cantrell is, is going to work uh, this week. He called me and said he reviewed our July numbers. They still look strong. He's going to work this week on our next year's budget. He and Brenda have been gathering some data from us and uh, he'll be working on the budget immediately. Uh, I'd like to announce that uh, you all are invited to the August 30th fish fry that NACOG is uh, sponsoring. 
uh, each elected official uh, is uh, specially invited to that. It's going to happen tomorrow night at 6 at the college auditorium there on the same grounds where NACOG's building uh, is. Our special guest today, uh, uh, Melinda Weaver, who represents our area for Alabama Power, and Terrence Moultrie, who heads up the lighting, municipal lighting division for Alabama Power. I believe Tuscaloosa's headquarters might be for you, is that correct? Uh, Birmingham. Birmingham, okay. Uh, most times I'm not there. <laughs> okay. I'll try to place you in Tuscaloosa. I don't know why I'm trying to put you over there. Anyway, uh, we're proud to have them with us today. And uh, um, I had contacted uh, Melinda about the, the possibility of some better lighting for our downtown area where we had uh, put up our um, decorative poles that went with the revitalization project downtown and um, she had contacted Terrence and we got to talking about the possibilities. LED lighting is, is not a thing of the future, it's here now. L LED is really big on everybody's agenda and Terrence agreed to make a presentation to us today and kind of update us on what they could do in the way of uh, maybe some kind of a, a deal with us here in the city and I'll not get too deep into his territory I'll just uh, at this time turn it over to Terrence or Melinda whoever wants to talk to us first. Okay. Um, as you mentioned Terrence works out of our Birmingham office on um, LED lighting across the state so uh, we met with Mayor Page a few weeks back and are here today with more detailed numbers. So we wanted to share those with you. So, Terrence, I'm turning it to Okay. Well, thank you, everyone, for having us here. Um, won't take too much of your time, but I did want to uh, go over what we have with LED lighting and um, have a, just a handout of a presentation that we have. And thank you. And so feel free to stop me as we go or ask questions to us in um, any way you want to. So what I wanted to, uh, first thank the mayor for meeting with us uh, not long ago about LED lighting, kind of get a, a little more information about your city and what you're looking for. And again, I'm the municipal account manager for LED lighting. At one point I had the entire state and then we got counterpart, but we're growing. Uh, um, we're pretty wide open when it comes to LED light street roadway lighting, but also for businesses and industrial customers. With that being said, uh, if you look at the presentation, and all it is is that we want you all to know as our customer that your current agreement that you have with lighting, whether it's uh, roadway lighting, street lights, or in your parking lots, or any, anywhere you have lighting and you lease through Alabama Power, that lease agreement does not change. That, that remains the same. And the good thing about the difference is what you're going to would be better lighting, um, not only better lighting, but also um, lighting that is more uniform, lower maintenance. And what we're doing now, what we weren't able to offer in non um, in the non LED lighting area, is that we can come in and also look at doing your parking lots and in, in your own city on street lights. And, and we can come in and retrofit the heads. And, and for roadway lighting, what we've been doing with cities is that we'll come in, and if you want us to, we can come in and take it over for you. So basically, from that point on, if somebody hits the pole, no cost to you all as far as up front, um, we, we invest all the capital. Only difference is, is that you just have a, a lease per pole, per location. So that, that's how that works. And then what I wanted to do on the next few pages was just show you all um, the difference in where we these are actually lighting jobs that we've done throughout the Southern Company system where wherever the lights were there we did the equivalent and we um, retrofitted the heads and that means just taking the entire head off and putting and you can see the difference the impact of um, the lighting that we put in and, and for norm, normally for all the parking lots that you have that is already leased through us non LED we are, there are some savings for those areas. So uh, we're able to come in, keep the price low for you, keep the price the same with about 5% savings on your parking lots. Uh, as long as if, 
they were released in the beginning from Alabama Power. Of course, if they were released from us and you all own it and say they're wired into your building or metered, then we already captured the energy. We'll just add a maintenance part of, of that agreement. But it works the same. You know, we own the fixtures and the wire to the handhold, and that really eliminates 80, 85 percent, sometimes 90 percent of any issues that you have with lighting. And so, uh, if you look at the next page, again, you'll see with the parking lot, the large parking lot with all the cars, you'll see the high impact of going LED. And again, we just did the equivalent of what was out there. And, and you can see how much it changed. And that's why a lot of parking lot, a lot of restaurants like for us to do their lighting because it's no color radiance. If you have your cameras, you know, your customers feel more safe, your citizens feel more safe because you can see a lot further and you can identify people with dark clothing. And then what I mentioned to you all about what we can do on your side of the meter, meaning um, if you look at the next picture, this is a road that is for a city, that for a major hospital, and this road, the city owned all of these poles, fixtures, and all. And the only thing we did up until a year ago was just provide the energy for those. The city was responsible for um, fixing those poles and own everything other than the energy. And so when they decided to go with us and, and change out the lights that they leaks from us, they said, hey, Alabama Power, we want to be out of the light business because we can free up our resources for other things. And so this is one where we came in. For roadway lighting only, if we come in and retrofit what you own, we can take it over for you all together. You know, for parking lots, we'll just own the fixtures and the wire. And you still own the poles in the underground. But the benefit of roadway lighting is we came in, and I actually, I couldn't get the four pictures because it, it was about 11 o'clock at night when I went out there. But um, you're talking about over 40 poles, two fixtures from each pole, so it's a long road. It's a busy road because it's a major hospital. So we came in and retrofitted all of those fixtures to LED light, and you can see the difference, and, and it, it, is, it was completely dark. You couldn't even, this is the same spot I came in, tried to take the four pictures. You couldn't even see further than your hand. That's how dark it was. And so we came in and we retrofit the heads and we took over all the ownership. Doesn't matter the, sh the shape, the condition of your life's fixtures. We own it, we, anything that needs to be upgraded, we do. Um, within a week of these lights being retrofitted, it rained, somebody hit a pole. That was a year ago. Since then, somebody hit about two more poles. Well, the city told us that based on what they normally have to pay somebody, a contractor, for what they pay us for the year, it pretty much would have covered that. Um, so all it, it eliminates is filing insurance, paperwork, all of that when we can get that, you know, take that over for you. So that's something to consider as well. And then on the next page, this is roadway lighting. And this is, uh, all of these were on wooden poles, 400 watt high pressure sodium cobras. And for another city that, you know, it's five lanes. And you can see uh, what we've done. We came in and did the equivalent of those 400 watt cobras. And we change them out to LED, no upfront cost to the customer. Now, what we're able to hold the price is, is that anything that's, uh, like say, if you currently have out there on your roadway, a 100 watt Cobra or higher, and the 100 watt Cobras are $10.18. If we come in and we change all those or higher, we hold the price for you. So the price doesn't go up, price doesn't go down. Now where the, uh, the price does impact goes up is when you have anything less than 100 watt Cobra, meaning like the 70 watt and the 175 watt mercury vapors, anything like a mercury vapor open bottom, meaning those lights were never designed for roadway. But years ago when cities started putting them in, it was because it was the least expensive light. And so what we've done as a company, out of Power Partnership with all our cities, is that we just maintain that low price because it's just an inexpensive light. But the LED lights, the technology has surpassed all those lights. And so with those lights you currently have, you got a lot of light pollution. And so what we're doing is we're going with more fissure light. And the fixtures, I brought one today. And this is actually what the LED fixture looks like. So you eliminate the globe, uh, the dirty fishbowl, I, I, I like to call it. But this is what it actually looks like on a pole. The, the fixture has to come off. The old fixture has to be removed from the bracket. And we put this in. And so each one of these are individual LED um, lights. Unfortunately, every now and then you may have, we may have vandalism to a certain area. And even if someone were to damage all of these on the side, the remainder would still work. 
you know, unless something with this. And, and these fixtures are, um, are three times as much, and the photo sale is five times as much, but we no upfront costs, which we try to keep the price at a minimum for our customers. So the technology on these, you know, we're looking at Wi-Fi, um, network control and dimming of lights and all that, especially for like your parks or your, your entertainment areas. Um, and also uh, fiber and um, we work with a lot of cities doing uh, shot spot and cameras, license plate readers. So that's something that you want to consider as well. And moving your city towards more of a smart city. So a lot of these that we're providing because of LED lighting is what a lot of cities are going with us uh, pretty much statewide because you know, smart city is defined by how you define it in your city, but it does include LED lighting and all the like smart, you know, uh, cameras and shot spots, those things that I mentioned, and other things that are coming down the pipeline with these LED fixtures. So that they're capable to do a lot of things for a lot of cities. It just depends on what you think is um, uh, appropriate for your city. And and on the last few pages of this. It's just different types of fixtures. You know, traditionally, historically, we've always used those two or three different types of fixtures for our cities. And these are not even half of the fixtures because we're going to LED that we're able to offer cities and, and unique. We can even take fixtures, for example, that you may have that may not be unique anywhere else but to here. And we can come in and work, take a fixture, work with our manufacturers, and 95% match that for you all. So uh, that is the beauty of LED lighting. And so um, if before we go into the costs and pricing analysis, does anyone have any questions? Yeah. We have less lights with this than we have now. now I mean distance apart. Okay. I'm speaking about. Okay, uh, good question. A couple of things. One, when we do a citywide upgrade, we do head for head. So with the pricing, then I'll pass out the price analysis now. What we do is, whatever you are, are being billed, um, and I, get whatever you're being billed in our billing system, we take that and, and we'll take that amount of number of lights and do a head for head change up, the equivalent. And so basically, it's a, it's a one for one. Now, if you have an area, sir, so for example, say you got a block with three lights and it's the high pressure sodium lights and if we can, um, you know, the LED are better watt lighting. So if it's an area where we can go uh, two instead of three, then we'll do that. But typically with the citywide upgrade and the good, the good news about, the good thing about you all's um, number of lights, you, you have very little of the, um, Make sure that is correct. You have very, you have a minimum of anything less than a 100 watt light. And remember, a 100 watt Cobra is ten dollars and eighteen cents a month. And so you have a, you have about 21 of the 175 watt Mercury vapors. And so those currently you're paying with tax and all ten dollars and five cents. So if you upgrade to the minimum, those lights in that one 100 watt Mercury vapor open bottom, which is six dollars. You're talking about if you upgrade your entire city to LED and far as the, and I just went off the building. Right now we're building you for 47 streetlights throughout your city. And so we come in and do a head for head change out uh, to LED and upgrade to the minimum what we recommend. Basically, you get a whole new lighting system, technology, uh, and your price will go up $7. No upfront cost to you and we hold the price like we always done for all our cities. And seven dollars a head, uh, just over your bill overall. Seven dollars. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Based on what you have out there now, and what what I've done on this price analysis, what I do is, is I take what that street. This is your street your street light account. That light account, I take out all the lights that are leased to you all from Alabama Power. I, it is a total of forty seven lights. I take those lights and I break them down from the type of fixture that you have. And so with those type of fixture, this is what you pan. For example, if you look at the first one, the open bottom 100 watt mercury vapor, those lights that you want to get off your, your roadway, because those are not environmentally friendly, and they're just, um, um, just a lot of light pollution. Luckily, you only have one. Because some cities, what we run into, they may have 300, 400 of those lights. 
and they're six dollars. So that's why the price goes up so high because you take two hundred lights, you time four dollars. You're talking about improving your city, but it goes your bill goes up eight dollars. So luck, I mean eight hundred dollars. But luckily, fortunately, with you all, you don't have many of those lights. And so basically, the lights that you have now, you can see where, if you look on the left hand side, that one light costing you six dollars for the mercury vapor 100 watt and then you got 21 in your city that we're building you for uh, the open bond 175 watt mercury vapors those are not good lights either but the price is closer to what we recommend so it will only be a 13 cent impact and then we have the and the good news is is that you have 25 of the uh, 250 high pressure sodium cobra lights those are above the 100 watt that we recommend so no price change for those either so we'll come in give you a better fixture and you don't have a price increase and how that works is that if you decide to move forward and remember this is just recommendation what we recommend all our cities to do because that's the most appropriate light that a lot of cities either put in from the beginning years ago or doing now and so um, what, what happens is, is that information on the left hand side that street light account is already established and so if you decide to do a master agreement right now with the, with the number of cities that, are, have, that have signed master agreements so far um, it went from an 8 to 12 week for shipment to about at least a minimum of three months shipment for these fixtures to come in and then once they come in we got to get it in, um, engineered and get it assigned to contractors four to six weeks to get that done and start installing but once we install it won't take long to install them because once we start we won't stop until we completely convert your entire city. And what happens is, is that it doesn't all happen at one time. That exist that, that existing streetlight account that you currently have with those 47 fixtures. What happens is we'll create a new account when once the fixtures come in, you will have where this account, the old account, will start number will start going down, and then the new account will start going up, and that will reflect the LED and the monthly billing and the difference will be set almost seven dollars and that's just based on what you're currently being billed what about maintenance on these these lights how have you found the the light maintenance for led is it pretty low or greatly reduced um a lot of cities the feedback we're getting especially from uh, the police um, um, department is that they appreciate it because they're a lot of times they're the ones that are either receiving the calls or having people going out at night to verify so they greatly reduce the maintenance and the calls are greatly reduced now we do still get where there may be a circuit out and that has nothing to do with the fixture itself or so maybe the wire something outside of the fixture that causes big cause lights not to work you know sometimes especially if we take over customers lights you know, our lights are on photo cells, but their lights may be on one circuit. So if something happens with one light, all of that string of lights will go out. So we'll come and repaint. But the maintenance is greatly reduced. Now, of course, you can't prevent people from hitting the poles and all that, but it's a lot less calls to have to come in or relamping of the lights every so often. Do you put up new poles? No, sir. We use the existing poles and brackets. Now what we now what we will do is is if a pole is leaning, especially if it's a light only pole, we'll come in and stra strain it out as much as we can, and then put a light on there. But the only thing that would be different would be the actual fixture. Everything else, wire and all that, remains the same. Because um, the thing about the LED light, the difference between what you have and what, what we're going to, our is a our department, the LED lighting department is a we're not but three years old. You know, Georgia Power and City Power Department is a lot older than we are. But we are three years old and we've grown our department. And so everything's in house. We have our own engineers. We have people, cap managers like myself. We have the sales reps. We have the finance. Everything's in house. Where versus where you typically you call, you call and you get power delivery, and you get the local office, you get separate departments. So everything's in house and we do everything in house. So the only thing we control is just the fixtures, unless. It's the light pole on. How about lightning? Is it a more is LED more susceptible to lightning strikes or anything like that? Have you found that to be lightning? not? No, sir. But typically, if it's anything to do with lightning, it's more so with the the, the energy that goes to the lights and like transformer fan blowing. 
of course, if a transformer gets blown because of lightning, then uh, lights don't work or power to your buildings, but not just the fixtures themselves. You still don't hit the fixtures. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are, are you telling us will we be putting up less lights than we have now and still have more lighting or the same amount? Same number. Same number? Yes. All right, how much is that going to cost? This is the cost right here. I mean extra over what we're paying now? Seven dollars. Based on fixture? 47 fixtures. No, total. Um, you're currently monthly you're paying an average of $706. So if you go, if you convert all of them to LED, you go from 47 to 47, 47 of the, what you have, the high pressure sodium lights, to 47 LED fixtures, you'll go up only $7 a month, your bill. As long as it's okay. the same number. But we're going to have to buy the lights. No, you don't do anything. In There's other no words, we're not going to be out anything for $7 or more a month. That is correct. There's no, and that's the well, benefit. we lose? <laughs> that's a big benefit to cities. Okay. That's the very yeah. big benefit. Yeah. Even if, if some cities, the price may go up significantly more, but they're looking at it as, well, something that we should have done a long time ago. We can do it. If I don't have to pay anything up front and the maintenance, nothing changes. It's just that it's better lights, more efficient lights, then I'm good with it. So basically what I'm saying is, is that based on what we have billing you for right now, you go to LED, your bill will go up $7 a month, you get brand new fish, no upfront cost to you, and that's what you pay every month. And your maintenance agreement remains the same, actually even better, because it, re it free up your resources at night. Are any of our exit lights on this program, or is this strictly for downtown? I don't, I well, this is, this street light account is anything, all the lights in your on your city limits. If it's a if it's a light leased to you from Alabama Power, roadway. So all of these are roadway lights. And so as long as it's in your city limits. Now, intersections, like say your state highway, that may be Aldot. You know, um, what we can do, what we are doing with cities now, especially at your intersection, your traffic signals, because again, you don't want to change all your roadway with Alabama Power and then you got these intersections with high pressure sodium lights. And so it's a benefit, it's a, it benefits everybody, because one, if we're, Agreed to work with cities where we'll come in and change out the intersections to LED. Of course, that benefits our dot as long as they approve it to where they don't have to, because eventually they're going to, you know, at some point they'll be changing theirs out to LED like they've done in some of their interstates. Well, it keeps them from having to put in the capital. We can come in and change out your intersections for those lights to LED. Now, we won't own anything because of the liability of those intersections traffic signals. We don't own anything of that. We would just own the fixture and the wire. So if the fixture goes out, we'll maintain the fixtures at those intersections, but we don't touch the poles or traffic signals. But again, it gets you more uniform. It gets better lighting at those intersections, especially with foot traffic and just safety and, and, um, and turning on red and all that. But it also helps as far as um, just a better look for their entire city. Because we have like four exits coming off of the interstate. Now, and I didn't know okay, now that's a good question. Now, we don't do interstate lighting yet. That is something that we probably end up, we'll do sometime in the future. I don't know when. Now, if it's on interstate, because you know a lot of those lights on interstate, those steel poles, they lead to the ramp, on, on the ramps, and they lead to the exit. Those are all tied into the same circuit. We don't touch those. Uh, those remain with uh, our dot in the agreement they have with the city. Now, if they put them in, we maintain them. Correct, correct. Now, if it's a light that is close to the intersection or at an intersection, you know, and it's not tied to that circuit, yes, we can work with you on those. We can definitely do that. But um, eventually, hopefully one day, because uh, I'm, I'm hoping soon that we can help a lot of cities because the question you ask, the same question a lot of cities ask, is that can you help with the interstate lights, especially the ramps? Because they're very dark, yeah. even when they're all lit up, they're still not very bright. what you need. I, yeah, so just, I, I love the presentation and the, and the, and the chance. I like the price. <laughs> and to get, the, to get the new lighting that has low maintenance and 
efficient lining like this, I think it's a great deal, a uh, one-for-one -one trade and mm -hmm. maintaining the price and the service agreement. Correct. All that is great. Yes, sir. So we're gonna we're gonna put this on the agenda for an approval. Uh, well, Janice, this isn't doing anything to the downtown, to the revitalized area. Now, are these lights? Is this new or existing that you have downtown? Yeah. That's a good question. Oh, okay. I've been, I downloaded it. Yeah, you compared to the roadway lines. Okay, I mean, <laughs> so the lighting you're talking about downtown I mean, is existing, it's already out yes, there. Yes, yes. Okay, now is this lighting owned in, by my, out of my power or is it owned by the city? I'm thinking the city. We own the, we own the revital, revitalization. So this will not touch anything in the downtown revitalized area? Correct. Okay. That, is, that is separate. Now, what cities are doing or working with us, and that's something you want, and we can look at for you all as well. If you're interested in us, if there's not, if, even if they're, well, two things. One, if they're not LEDs, and you want them to be LED, what we can do is we can come in and retrofit all the heads. The good thing about working with all the fixtures we have, again, we can match at least close to 95% of the look that you have, or typically, depends on if it's the same fixture, a lot of our manufacturers already use, and maybe somebody you've worked with in the past, we come and match that same fixture. You pay. You don't pay anything up front. We already captured the energy. The only thing will be added will be the maintenance part, and it could range from anywhere from twelve to twenty dollars per per pole. So, uh, uh, and then what happens is, if it's roadway light, uh, we come in say decoratives. We come in retrofit the heads. Then every month, how many poles you have, that's what you be billed for the maintenance agreement. And then if somebody gets a pole or whatever. You're out of light business. You call out on power, somebody hits the pole, you don't have to do any of your paperwork for insurance, any of that. So we'll limit all of that that you have. You just call us. You don't call a contractor. If somebody digs the wire out, you know, in the ground, and um, you call us, we take care of everything. Now, if you've already converted to LED, we can just come in and just start charging your maintenance from that point forward, and it's nothing else you do, and we can take care of that for you. So it's just how you, how you want it. So if they're not LED, we can work with you and give you a proposal to change all those lights out to LED. You pay nothing up front, and then we just own everything for you. So you called about the downtown. Yeah, but that's in fact, what we're, this. Okay, but in fact, we're not discussing the downtown. No. Okay, that's why no. I got confused. Because oh, okay. in the beginning, you said he called about the downtown area, well, and then we, we start about talking yeah, about all this <laughs> other, and I'm thinking, wait a yeah, minute. No, 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 like, okay, so the downtown's completely well, out of He this. heads up that okay. department and, and for them, and, and he's, he represents their uh, sales force for this, and, and he's actually offered to help me with the downtown uh, bubs that we, we need to upgrade our bubs down there so when we have events people are not in the See dark that. we're still yeah. in the dark we got lights but they don't project enough light to, to light up our street and we were looking to do something there also we can we can look at it with you if you have somebody mayor uh, if you have somebody that represents your city that knows down to maybe your facilities person or somebody that knows voltage. Because what we have to do is I have to connect them with our engineer. An engineer would be with them on site. If they have lighting plans or the number of fixtures or, or, or the information, if not, that's fine. We just need to see the voltage and all that and see what it's going to require. Determine what's out there now because it may be a, a 70 watt you know, light that we can go with a better. Now keep in mind what we also can do for you, we, uh, no cost to you all, we work with our manufacturers, the photometrics. We can do a, a lighting study of what you have, and then it'll come back and it'll tell us if we go to these types, you know, we can show you the lighting pattern and say, because a lot of times the spread will be better. We can we can show you, you know, the results of where it would it'd be beneficial if you upgrade those lights. They may be already the water is, you know, the high water is just, it's just not very bright. They're pretty new. Okay. Could, could you do all of that for us and give we us a price on it? Yeah, what we it, could do all that. What no, extra it would cost us? Yes, sir. We no cost know. to you. Okay. Well, we sure want to do it. It's no yeah. cost to us. <laughs> and we need to do it bad. That's We need it bad. Okay. How many decorative lights are we talking about? Do you know right off? How many yes. blocks? Oh, God. About nine poles. 
thing. There's two lights on some of the poles. And I, I think there's something about the downtown, though, that this isn't going to... Uh, <coughs> Rodney, do you know how many poles were installed? I can't, I can't remember. It's not a, a lot of poles, is it? No. They've not been there just a few years. Yeah. No, so it, there might it's, be a, a it was done of, and the last administration did the revitalization and all the poles were put up then. So we're two years into this. They're probably three to four years old. If you, if you have those plans, that would be great. Yeah. We could do that, but also we can upgrade your existing lighting. Is it any overhead nearby or any, like, we got your decorative lights, but is there any no, poles? No, no. Just only decorative lights? Only decorative okay. lights. Okay, we can, we can And I'm thinking that. that there's something, because of the way that was paid for, that it, there's some, some deal about changing the overhead lights or, I'm trying to find out just a minute. Or keep on talking. I'll keep no, on texting. I'm, I'm good. Just uh, we can look at that and give you a price. Kenneth, these folks are from Alabama Power. They're talking to us about LED lighting versus what we have on our streets, all of our street lights that are in the city limits. Uh, uh, exchange one for one. Uh, total of 47 exchanges, raising our bill six dollars and ninety cents a month. Over what we pay currently, keeping the same maintenance agreement, and uh, they're also thinking about helping us examine the possibility of getting better lighting on our downtown revitalization. Those poles are pretty dim when we have events, outdoor events, and they're going to try to help us there also. Kenneth's on our council. He's no just, cost. he's I been working work. today. <laughs> hey, at no cost. Do they last longer? Oh, yes, sir. Maintenance is greatly reduced and they last longer. <laughs> we can still use them like we are the ones now as far as if we plug in Christmas lights. Yeah, we don't touch any of that. that none no. of that will change. We don't touch any of that. We okay. just retrofit the heads. We don't touch the pole. We don't... End. We want to keep the look, the same look, the same which, which you have now. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So, Kenneth, that, uh, that head that you brought with you today. Oh, yes. Sorry. That's an LED street light. That's cons is exactly completely it contained. Like. He says you could damage one side of that and yeah. actually the other would remain good. All of these are individual LEDs. Jimmy Bryant. Yeah, yes, sir. And no light pollution. Well, more for I'll, I'll end up with one soon. Thank you. He's a little mad at me. I said he was from Tuscaloosa. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> I'll be from Tuscaloosa if you want me to. <laughs> Sammy's okay. going to uh, research that a little bit more and yeah. make sure that we can actually exchange those light heads. For and maybe if we're just exchanging them, we can, but we can't add anything extra. There's there's some there's some deal. We got a government grant, uh, block grant, to do that work downtown, and there's some rules that went along with it. So we have to make sure we comply with the federal rules and follow those to the letter. Even though we're not satisfied with the brightness of those pole lights, the little lamps that are on the top of the pole just don't give us enough light when we have events. We're having like uh, fir uh, first Fridays and things like that each month. And for those events, we have some entertainment right after the sun goes down. And a lot of times people have to What's going on out there? And you mentioned grant. What we do, you know, of course we don't do on our side, but if you have grants where you work on light projects, we can work on what we do for streetscape projects that you have with your own. We work with cities where we'll work closely with your developer or your architect 
and um, you know you can do everything like you're doing it on your own. We provide the expertise, what we recommend, the photo metrics, and we won't do anything as far as cost. You, you cover the cost through your through your, uh, through your grant, and then once it's installed, we'll take it over for you. We just make sure you meet our light specs. So that's something to consider as well, too. Tell you what you mentioned, you hit on something that kind of flew by me there, but I want to come back to it, and that's parking lots. Mm -hmm. um, Explain a little bit more about your program for parking lots because I kind of missed that. Okay. I now, um, for example, if you have your parking lots that have our lights already that you lease from out of one power, a lot of times they're on overhead. Now, what we are able to provide savings are we can come in and change all those fixtures out to LED and give you uh, savings on those. So there are some savings, so about 5% savings. So in the more lights you have, the more you save. Uh, now, if you have your own lights, you know, we can also look at retrofit nodes. But again, we won't, now the difference between roadway lighting and your parking lots, you know, roadway lighting, we will, you know, take it, everything over for you. But on the parking lot, you'll still own the infrastructure, yeah. you know, but more than likely the fixture and the wire is 85% of your issues when you run into. What happens with that is if somebody, say, hits a pole in your parking lot or damage the underground, and we have already uh, retrofitted the heads and the wire. We don't get involved with the repairs or, re or replacing the pole. The customer does that. Once that's done, we come back in and make sure the light and the wire to the, from the handhold to the fixture work properly. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference between roadway. Roadway will own everything. You know, we take care of all the infrastructure damage. Mm -hmm. You know, so we can do your lights. You you continue if they're metered or tied to the building. That will continue, that doesn't change. However, that energy is being captured. The only thing that changes is you just pay a maintenance agreement for the fixtures. Now, if it's where we already own the fixtures and you don't own anything, you just pay us monthly, you lease it from us, we can come in and change all those lights out to LED and have you some savings. Well, how about oh, our new rec center? We're building a new rec center building over there. Okay. How about that? What's our lighting over there? How are we? I, I just sounds like a good time to uh, look into that. Because so the contract had new lighting designed into it. Yeah. Okay. But I don't know if exactly how Andrew worked that as far as if he went to Ronnie and got uh, it, Ronnie, I guess, would have talked with her about that. I'm not sure. Made recommendations. We're getting some new lighting on Ronnie Garner. Yeah. I think she would have talked to him, but I'm not certain. She normally yeah. does. I can check. We're building a new rec building over there, and we need uh, to make sure that we have, you know, the correct lighting and everything. Since it's all going to be new, parking lot, all of them. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so all the light, the poles, all that will be brand new. I don't know about that. I don't know about that okay. outside. I don't know. There's something no, about the lighting, but I don't remember what it was. Okay. But okay. I would sure like to see it done well, while we're doing the building. Uh, her number is 915-1961. Okay. Andrea, would you mind making contact with her and, and see what she's got worked out on her lighting for the recreation center? Sure. Or like Bonnie, to. whoever whoever's supposed to do that. Okay. Um, and let her know that we, we're thinking LEDs is how we'd like to go back with that. And we have a lot, a lot of lighting over there too. Mm -hmm. Tennis courts and all this stuff is over there too. Okay. And now it's that save lighting, us. is it decorative? Is I, it, don't, I have no idea. I wonder if that's our lights or if that's... If it's our lights, we can just change them out to LED, yeah. no problem. I think they are. I do too. I really do. I think they are. But I, I believe that's something we really need to look into if we're one into this other. Well, I wish I was able to just give you an answer. Spending a lot of money over the there. Center lots are ours. Or that, I love ours. I'd like to That's very close. We're going to we'll look at it when we look. We'll leave, we'll leave here. I'll take some pictures to see what's out there. Yeah, we yeah, have a lot of There can't be any overhead wiring. No overhead wiring. No overhead wiring. No overhead wiring. All the, uh, everything for beautification was put underground, all the surface okay. is underground. Okay. Yeah, we'll get, we got some work to do, we'll get all that for you.
But I was going to ask you about the city parking lot too. The city parking lot too. Oh yeah. Because it's it's pretty damn. Yeah. If we should, if we should, on this 47 that we actually got a proposal for, if we should adopt that soon, would that would it mess up working with the other parts? No, of? sir. Uh, no, sir. Cities have multiple projects with us. Okay. It's, now that is probably the, the most time consuming as far as ordering fixtures because that's one big shipment. Yeah. You know, uh, but we treat each one individual projects. Okay. We'll probably uh, we'll probably be talking from time okay. to time if it doesn't listen slow. to you guys. How much longer does LED last? The lights last. Well, the manufacturer for us the warranty seven to ten years. But you know, with us, the beauty of it, the fixtures that you have had out here currently, your roadway lighting, been out here for decades. You know, the warranty was expired a long time ago. But when you without one power, you almost it's really a lifetime warranty. You don't worry. You don't have to worry about what the warranty looks like with the manufacturer. We cover all that, even if the manufacturer was to fold. You know, that's just like oftentimes when you get things done in your house, you either get a side contractor, so you know, or you go through Lowe's who use a contract. But you know, that contractor a year, two years down the road can be in vacation in Hawaii and just quit the business, and you stuck with maintaining whatever. But you know, Lowe's hopefully are typically not going anywhere, and they. They're honor that warranty, whatever that same thing with all my power. But our warranty lasts forever. So even with the fixtures, the manufacturer guarantee seven to ten years, that's like if you decide to do the, do the lighting yourself, say, I don't want to use all my power, we'll put it on poles. Well, the manufacturer may guarantee seven to ten years, but even after that, leading to that point, you're still responsible for the resources, the time dedicated. But without all my power, yeah, you pay a little bit more, but it's a lifetime warranty. So if the light goes out, we call, mm -hmm. come and place it, and what's the charge of the mm -hmm. replacements? Nothing. It's good. The same agreement that you have now with your street lights, it's the same. The, the agreement is honored. It's just that we offer more technology. We're holding the price where we can. The majority of the lights that you have, we're able to hold the price. The price, no upfront costs. All of the captive costs is because it's, it's a large task for us up front, but we don't pass that along to the customer. What we do is is put in everything in this business as usual for you. Okay. A seven dollar increase. Based on what you currently have out there now. Thank you, Terrence. But do y'all have any more questions for us? We're just gonna leave and go and check out those um, parking lots. Oh, okay. see what's out there. <laughs> okay. Just see, I'm gonna take some pictures, see what we can get. Okay. Kind of look at a rec center. You go back. Yeah, but we're gonna do that yeah, one first. Okay. Okay. Yeah. She, I, I have no idea where I am, so okay. she's gonna show me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I just know this is beautiful. You know, I just know this is a beautiful building. <laughs> Since we're redoing yeah, that downtown yes. revitalization. Yes, I'll show it that. Uh, yeah. Take a look at that okay. also because we'd like to have better lights there. Okay. Uh, now we don't do now we don't do um we don't do athletic life. We don't do that. Um Georgia Power did it at one point the years and they got out of that and a lot of this I guess with the kids playing and if something happened they looked at them and you know, so we don't do athletic but we what we can do is the walking trails or the parking lots that lead to those tennis courts. Well you'll see all of that over there together. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for allowing thank us to come. Thank you. Thank you. We'll talk to you all soon. Well, thank you very much. We're uh, pretty excited here today to hear that it's good news. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Mary. Thank you, Terrence, for coming. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Rodney, I'm going to put you up next, if you don't mind talking to our council next, please. <coughs> Uh, what I've got, I've got uh, one of my wastewater plant operators. He's going to be retired next September, Joey Triplett. And uh, we have to, ADM requires a trainee to work 1,900 hours in the plant as an intern before he can operate the plant by himself. Uh, and 1,900 hours 
to take 40 hours a week divided out to 27 and a half weeks that you have to be as a trainee. And during that time as trainee, he can he can take his test at any time to be a certified operator, wastewater operator. So he can take the test any time during that time. But we highly recommend we put them through school and classes and everything before they and they have to do a lot of studying before they can take that test and pass it. So, so he's looking at retiring in September. September of this next year. So that's going to put us needing to hire a trainee pretty quick to get him trained that whole time before Joey leaves. So he'll be ready to. Right now I've got three operators at the wastewater plant. And they work. Well, that, that plant has to run eight hours a day, seven days a week. Now they rotate off during one of them works every Saturday and Sunday, and then he's off the following week, part of the week, to, to make up for that work on Saturday and Sunday. And they rotate when they work Saturday and Sunday. So it, it, it takes four operators to keep it running year round, right? Well, I mean, we've got three now. That's yeah. all we have. Oh, yeah. So I thought you had three left after he goes. No, we, no we've yep, got we're, three now. Okay. So we're going to have to hire an extra, the man that you're going to replace them with, we're going to have to hire him for this year so he can go ahead so and he can be a Do you have somebody in that? No, I don't. But I'm just asking that, that maybe at the next council meeting we post the job. You know, we can have any choice. Right. We got to have it. Yeah. That happens. Yeah. Uh, What's it cost of training? That, that's a good question. I mean, the training is it, is it on the job training, supervised on the job training. A lot of it's on the job training. Uh, the classes that I do, I had one this year, and we'll have another one in February. Uh, I'm actually holding a class here, but it's for all the all the operators and all the certified people, and we get people from other surrounding areas that's certified operators that need CEHs to come into this class. You hosted one this year, didn't you? Yes. And I'll be hosting another one in February. If, if somebody applied for that job that had certification, would that eliminate your problem? Y yes, it would. Uh, if they were already certified. Yeah. I mean, but you don't normally get certified operators to apply? No. I talked to the Gewin, uh chairman of the board for the Gewin Water Authority, and he said they were having a, a real hard time finding a certified person. You, they're, they're, they're getting extinct. I mean, we're fixing to have a shortage of certified operators in the state, water and wastewater. The young man that was duly trained that was here a couple of years ago, does he, does he have a job? I don't know what happened to him. Okay. He didn't because he would have been a plus because he was wastewater and water treatment. He was, he was taking some classes for wastewater and water. Uh, he kind of fell off the radar. I don't know what happened to him. Uh, he didn't fulfill his time he was going to spend here oh, okay. before he left. And I don't know where he went. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, well, what are you what are you saying we need to do? We, we'll do whatever we need to do. I think I'm just saying we need to post, you know, post a job for a trainee at the wastewater treatment plant as a wastewater plant operator. So we we don't have any choice. We we got to do it. So whatever you take application or whatever. Joey's Joey's looking at what target date? September of, of next year. He. He's, he'll have his 10 years of service in and he'll turn 65 in April, I think. But so by the time we uh, advertise this job and get someone possibly hired, it'll take all that time to I'll train him. Okay. okay. <coughs> With the council's consent, we will go ahead and post that job Monday night. Um, if, if, 
somebody says we need to wait for some reason. Wouldn't be any reason to wait. But I mean, the time's running but short. We, have, we can't wait. wait really. We have to do the the internal uh, deal thing first to see if anybody's yeah. interested from within. Okay. We've been running on at the same time. Because of because the of change our, in the paper situation. Let's go ahead and post it both ways. Put that on our agenda. To we need a motion on that? We, we'll have to bring it up uh, Monday night. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we <laughs> forgot we can't that. vote today. That's, right. that's okay, though. Well, we need to discuss. We need to have the discussion. 83 years old. <laughs> I just want to give y'all a heads up about it today so yeah. I would know, you know. Well, I got a question, I ain't really saying I'm not messing about this, but is there a, you got to have a license to put in like these sewer jobs you've been getting contracts to do? Do you got to have a certain license to get these contracts or anything? Just like one behind Sibley's that line. Do you got to have, can any contractor do this is what I'm yeah, thinking. Yeah. So anybody can bid on this. Yeah. Well, I would ask the question, who, who do, who's doing this one down here? Well, we didn't bid this one out. See, it was under the bid law. We didn't have to bid it out. I know, but who got the contract for that? Uh, Deacon Way Construction. Were they out of it? Uh, That's what I'm getting at. You got uh, Jeremy Evans, Heath, and all these others could be doing him. Could they not? Well, they don't have the equipment that they have. Heath does. I work with him. I know he's got the equipment to do Yeah, he, well, he's got some track over stuff. I mean, I know, I've been on them. I know what they got. <laughs> that's where I'm getting at. Keep these local boys, because everybody's shop Hamilton, shop Hamilton. And these very people that's got these contracts around here is not getting jobs to do this stuff. Well, that's my point. The reason the reason that Digaway's doing this job is they, they've helped us out many, many, many times at 2 o'clock in the morning. We call them and they come. We had a 10 inch line busted over across the river uh, going over to the industrial park. My guys worked over there for three days straight, day and night. And I called them and I said, have you got any 10 inch pipe in the yard? They said, no, but I'll find you some. They came over there at 11 o'clock one night with me some 10 inch pipe. And he told me, he said, I know your guys are here now. He said, when they get, if they get tired, call us, we'll be back. Called them the next night and they showed up at 10 o'clock and worked all night and let our guys go home and get a little sleep after three days being over there. But that's just the type of people they are. I mean, they, they've helped us out a lot of times when we get in the back. Oh, I understand. But I still say the people in Hamilton need a shot at stuff like that. Because they live here. That's my opinion. Yep. Well, I, I agree with that, too. I don't I mean, I'm not saying it's Heath or Jeremy or whoever got this kind of equipment. If they here in Hamilton, they need to be getting bids for this. Because I've been asked this question about this stuff. And I didn't have no answer about it. I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't know if it was a special Have well, either one of these had. men ever installed a, a commercial septic yes. line? I know Heath and him has. I know. The man holes and all that they do. I'm just curious. I, I think he's been doing a lot of work for us, hey? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm, just, I'm yeah, not yeah. saying just him. I'm talking yeah. about anybody here. Well, last time I could try to get Heath to do something for me personally, uh, it's been. Well, I'm just saying months. him or anybody yeah. local. I, I was, I was going to know, you know. I didn't know. I didn't have a clue. When somebody asks you that question, then you got no answer for it. I said, I'll find out. <laughs> That's all I know to do. Because <laughs> I didn't know that myself. But normally when we do a project like that, yes, we do use contract, uh, licensed contractors to do them. Well, I mean, I'm talking about I didn't know if it had to be a certain license in sewer or hooking them up. You know, I didn't, I didn't know. Normal projects that we that we do are over the bid limit, and we have to have them bid out, and and that's when 
most of the time they are bid out and everybody has an opportunity to put a bid in on that. You don't, don't know until you ask. Yeah. I gotta find this stuff out. Thank you, Rodney. Uh, we've had another police cruiser totaled out last week, and um, as you might know, it's one of our nice Tahoes that's uh, got to be replaced. It's, it's not our newest, but it's a 16 model. And I think I've had me a bait of Tahoes. Um, five of them have been wrecked since I've been in office. And uh, I don't think they're, I think with them being top heavy, they're nice to work out of. I think they're too hard to drive. And I'm gonna recommend that we don't replace our cruiser that's gonna be coming up. I want a four door sedan, it's my preference, of some sort, Ford or Chevy. I don't want any more chargers um, roaring down the highways. Well, so we're going to have to be deciding about that. So y'all be thinking on it and getting your best concepts and ideas together. Uh, unless I change my mind drastically and have shown where we ought to be buying Tahoes, I'm going to say maybe we go with four-door sedan type vehicles for police work. What happened was in a chase or what happened the reason they wrecked? The uh, Tahoes also got an inherent problem with they have to idle them to keep the uh, computer equipment in the cabs uh, uh, from overheating uh, on hot days. And General Motors is strictly given a warning about idling their motors long periods of time. It's, it's real bad for the vehicle. So I looked at two new Fords that have just come in up to Haleville last week when I went to a meeting up there. I liked them pretty good. Y'all be thinking about uh, replacement for this uh, wrecked vehicle. We're pretty certain it's totaled out, is that correct? Mm -hmm. so I haven't heard the official word, but that's what We'll I'm be getting an insurance check for, for it. We, all the equipment was salvageable. We didn't lose any equipment. We'll be able to disassemble all the equipment and, and replenish that into Another cruiser, but what kind did you say it was? I don't know. It's a Tahoe. No, what you're looking at? Pardon? What, you're not looking to buy one then? Uh, we'll we'll need to replace the one that's just been totaled. Yeah. But I, I just want y'all to think and make some recommendations uh, as to what we get buy going forward. I, I'd like to go back to the sedan type car, four door um, car to work out of instead of a Tahoe. It seems that. Well, I have to see it. They just haven't. Nobody knows young boy. Well, they're young as police. Uh, we, we may have just had a bad run of luck, but yeah. I, it seems like it. Of course, it might not have been it because of that, you know. That's two or three, isn't it? It's, well, no, it's two late. We've had one stolen from us during an arrest, and it was totaled out by a well, supposed to be a prisoner. But he got away from us and totaled one of our vehicles. And then we've had uh, one side swiped, we had a head on, we had a, one that had the wheel knocked off of it by another person's vehicle while they were doing a turnaround. And it's just all kinds of bad luck. But I don't know if they're hard to see out of or just what. They are pretty top heavy, and we lost this one in a curve. Maybe a tire failure was being claimed as a culprit, but I don't know. At this point, I don't know all the answers. But I'm just thinking maybe we'll consider a four-door sedan type. They're not quite as expensive. As I say, the Tahoes are very nice for the um, officer to work out of, but we're having a lot of bad luck with them. But could we buy it here in town from the fact Chevrolet, they don't want to be out here, right? 
Well, we'll probably always buy everything under state bid oh, okay. because that's certified to be the cheapest available. Okay, I, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm so, I think we'll save money to stay under the state bid rule. And, but I think we can buy a less expensive vehicle and, and do good work out of it. I'm just a little bit leery of continuing to buy Tahoe's because we're wrecking past the put on the road. I have asked that all of our officers that's been involved in an accident go to driving school um, to get a certified um, certificate for upgrading their driving skills. They've got a lot on their mind when they're trying to look at their computer information about that tag number ahead and, you know, this kind of stuff. It's, you have to pay close attention when you're out there operating the car and doing other things. I'm not saying that that's the cause of any of the wrecks, but it could be. Distractions. In this case, the other night, it was, uh, we were making a call and probably urgency in the call and we were probably running pretty fast speed, I think. I know the vehicle that went south in the same car was running fast because I watched it go down the road and the other one was coming in from the other side on a more country road and that's where the accident happened. Um, for two years now, uh, I've been talking about cleanup and littering my solutions don't seem to be working very good. Y'all be thinking about strategies for more city cleanup and, and littering problems. Uh, they continue to be big in my mind and making our city look bad. And if y'all could help me come up with some ideas, I'd appreciate it. People are not listening about throwing things out on their street. They continue to do that. Rapid pace, you can drive down the street today, you can see things have been blown off the back of pickups. You can see things have been deliberately thrown out car windows for anything from bottles to boxes, pieces of plastic, building materials, everything you can imagine is on our main drag down here. As many times as we pick it up, it comes right back. So our guys don't mind picking up paper because it's part of their job. But the severity of it and the amount of times we're having to do it is a problem. Some things will happen and cause some litter, but deliberate littering is a real problem in our city. Um, retail strategies uh, is something we uh, didn't ever motion and second on, that's something we need to decide pretty soon. The contract I think ran out in late July, it's almost September and we haven't let them know whether we'll continue on with them or not. They're the folks that are working, trying to recruit retail business for our city. They work for us a year. Uh, they told us how many calls they had made on our behalf and, and how many contacts they would made, but we haven't really seen the real fruits of, our, of their labors yet, but uh, we'll need to decide whether we want to give them another year, 5,000 less cost this year than we paid last year, 45,000 year one, 40,000 year two and year three, if we stay with them. Uh, I'll sell the them on a commission if they do anything. They won't work that way. I just, I just can't see paying a year. In, nobody pays me a year in advance. Nobody pays you in a year in advance. And everybody wants to pay the year in advance. I don't know if anybody does that. You got anything you want to offer as a solution to get retail here? No, but if they're the ones that screwed this Jacks deal up, what they did, if they wanted done the compromising on that, they had it messed up. I knew more about what was going on than they did. Did they have any hand? Did they have to do? Because the man Jack said that they was dealing with retail strategies about the about the abatement plan. 
So, if that's the way they do business, I just don't agree with it. We're going to try to get it on the ballot to vote. We need to get them in or get them out. Uh, I'd like to do that Monday night if we can. And we're going to go with the majority on that. Uh, so, you know, it's just we don't need to keep them hanging because they might send us a bill that they'll expect money on if we keep doing it, taking them down the road with us. We had a contract for three years with an opt-out agreement each year, but we haven't opted out or opted to stay in, so we need to do one or the other. If y'all are permitted, I'm going to put it back on the agenda and, and bring it to a, at least a vote uh, next meeting of uh, whether or not it's a stay-in vote or a get-out vote. It's up to the council. Uh, and, and I don't know exactly what to say about who messed up what on the Jacks deal. The Jacks is building... I was going about what the man said. Jacks is building a restaurant, that's all I know. They've got the permits and they've uh, their license. They paid for their sewer this morning, uh, like they agreed to do, plus some additional uh, meter sets and that kind of thing. All of it's paid up to date uh, in advance. So I like doing business like that. I don't really have a lot more today. If y'all want to talk about something, we'll talk about anything that's on your minds. Any subjects you want to talk about, Tammy? Tammy had to go to the dentist this morning. Let's just all feel sorry <laughs> for her. She came home with a pretty smile. I told her I haven't been in that dentist chair in way too long. I hope it's a long time before I go again. You give that to uh, what's his name? Did he, he reported to you every morning. Angela, did you have anything else for our council today? Any any comments or things that they need to know about? Um, well, I've got some things coming up that uh, I'm going to have to work on. But they've changed with our um, insurance requirements where I've got to do um, kind of like, it's not a background, but it's driving history on all employees that actually drive any type of city vehicle. I've got to start doing the history on all of those. So Will that require picture driver's license and things like that? Um, yes, I have to put that information in. I have to send off to the state for the report. And I think each report's like five dollars and something, but that's that's one thing we kind of got written up for this year because I hadn't been doing it. But they wanted to change it because they say people's driving history's changed so much. Um, so that's one thing I want to I'm going to have to start doing. You're them. you're dealing with RDS a little bit on a couple of issues right now. I am. I am. I have to stay on top of them because they do our. Um, they collect like our lodging, our sales tax, uh, process our business license, the alcohol tax. Occasionally they'll start an audit without <laughs> our, us actually ordering an audit on a customer and then kind of want to bill us for their time they've worked on it. And we don't know really the fruits that we get in return for the audit. Sometimes we feel like it's not that great. So we have to watch things like that or we'll be paying for stuff we didn't order. Yeah, they put a lot of audit fees on us if we don't watch it and question them. So. Yeah. I want to say about this retail strategy. Uh -huh. Do you have any, any, what do you, how do you feel about it? Do we need to get them to come back and talk? To us, if you think so, and tell us that what plan they've got on. I want them. If 
we're going to pay them forty thousand dollars. I'd like to know if they're going to earn. We keep getting forty thousand here and forty thousand, and not. Yeah. I, I don't really have well, it. We we yeah. you need help, I guess. I don't really have it. They can't make us an, a promise to deliver anything. They keep saying that we'll try. Uh, but they've had success at other places. It's, it's the only. They're only six years old. Their company's only six years old. Uh, they're just beginning to build a track record. Uh, what we did as a city is placed our confidence in them as a as an up and coming uh, way to recruit uh, industry. I mean retail stores. Uh, like I say, they told us uh, the number of calls and and. Uh, workshops they've gone to, seminars all over the country, introducing Hamilton, Alabama to people, and there's a good number of people that look at places like us that's on their list of, of businesses. How many of them will ever locate here, they'll never guarantee us. Well, you but, know what, what gets me is they tell you up front that actually just about tell you up front that they can't probably won't do anything the first year that you're going to pay them forty five thousand dollars they, they probably won't do anything well that kind of makes me think they looking at that other well they don't do anything they're looking for you to be global enough i guess you would say to go into the next one and pay them 40 more yeah and then if they can get you one or something or two then maybe the other 40, th maybe they'll get you something and then, you know, it's, it's I don't know, well, right? it's kind of like a game to me. They're with some cities that, that the first contract's already run out and they've renewed the second one. Yeah, right. So the, the, their track record, even though it's not that many years, they've already had some contracts run out in a three-year period and they've renewed. But, uh, you know, we're, we're a community of 7,000 approximately. So to expect all the big stores to file in here is just something we should never expect. No, we don't expect it. But to get a few of those stores that would help our shoppers, you know, would be worth something to us. Besides the new opportunities for revenue and this kind of thing. Um, I don't know. We tried these people for a year with an option to stay or, or leave them, and, and I'm just, I just want to bring it back to the table to either certify that we'll stay with them or get out before we all have hurt feelings here and them send us a bill <laughs> and say, we've served you 14 months, we won't pay for this too. So I think we just need to vote at this point and decide if we're going to stay or, or leave them. And, and I want everybody to vote their own sentiments. I, I can have an opinion, but I can't vote for you guys. I want everyone to vote your hearts. If you don't think it's good for Hamilton, what we're doing, um, don't continue. If, if you think it is, continue. I mean, that's the way I put it. And I wouldn't at all try to have you vote one way or the other. I, I really, I, you know, like you say, it's, it's a gamble. Oh, yeah, it is. It's a gamble. And I, it is. I hate to throw away $40,000, but yeah. I hate to not have somebody working for us, too. And, and Kenneth's already said that he, he don't know if they handled the last deal correctly, and he's got to think about it, and that's okay. I mean, I don't, I'm not going to say that, that Kenneth's not partly right there. I think there's been a breakdown in, on communications with him some, and it might, he might point a finger at me on some of that and say, you didn't properly inform us. But sometimes we just don't have the time to sit down and talk about everything we need to talk about. And it, it's very difficult a lot of times to have conversations that we should have. But um, maybe a straight telephone call would be a better way to talk to you guys than, than to try to meet together. Because um, a lot of times... It's hard to chase you down. <laughs> yeah. I'm in every day. Yeah, it's just a gamble, that's right. It's, um, if any of you ever have questions of me, I want you to ask them because 
obviously I don't mind giving you uh, the matters that I have to give you. I, I'll share anything you ask me. Uh, I, don't, I never want us to fail to talk if we need to talk. So, uh, well, how, how is our other new uh, station down here? Have you heard anything else about it? Loves? Loves, yes. I talked to Scott Hunt last Friday and he said Mr. Gleason had said that everything is full steam ahead. Uh, there's no hold-ups of any kind, that no barriers about him coming and developing loves for us. They haven't broke ground yet, yeah. but I think they will soon. I, I told Scott if anything looks shaky or uh, anything that I need to know about that, please call me. I, when I don't hear from him, I call him or send him a text message, the best way to get him. And every time he'll respond. He's talked to Mr. Police and everything's fine. Well, so, they need to know, though, that we need to know as, or y'all need to, we need to know as quick as we can if we're going to have to get with the state or somebody about redoing this road. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's real important. That's going to be an important thing to get that road because it's going to take some time. Yeah, you're right, team. You're exactly right. I did talk to Keith Jones, and he said uh, yeah. our package for our grant looks real strong. He didn't say we've been approved, but he said our, our oh, application right. looks yeah. real strong. He's from NACOG, and he's been talking to some of the powers that be about it. Mm -hmm. How about the car company? Are you more from them? Who? Uh, tire company. Yeah, I called them and told them that Loves is coming. They're missing their opportunity to get down here and sell all these truckers' tires. And, and she said that she'd tell the boss man he was out that day, and that sounded exciting to the office lady, but I haven't heard a word from Wilkes. They haven't expanded to any other territory. I do know that. I asked her if they put any new facilities in. She said, not yet. She thanked me for calling me. I'd still like to have them. I think they're top-notch mm -hmm. folks to see. It's good to see everybody at the table today. Herb, we want you to keep improving. Bob Joe, you keep <laughs> improving. Gene's had a little stamp put in. He's feeling better now. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell me that a stamp's a miracle thing. I haven't had one. Appreciate everybody coming. I wish I had more to give you today.